All right, so before five color mush humans was a thing, there were some various Bant decks that existed that leaned into company like this one. So this deck, as you'll see here, is leaning more heavily into threes. And there's two reasons we do that. The first is we have eight mana dorks here, which makes playing more threes reasonable. And Collected Company is a better magic card. Collected Company is a better magic card when it's getting more three drops. So we've got M19 card Militia Bugler here, which is a card that wasn't played in this deck last time it was around. So I'm interested to kind of give this a try, see how it feels. I'm not, I'm not expecting this to be better than five color humans, but it could be something that's a little bit different, but still powerful. I've got, I've got the Mize Retreat to Coral Helm in here as well, which can technically turn three combo people with Knight if everything comes together. It's also like kind of cute for tapping down blockers inside of combat and stuff like that. But I think between like Bugler and Eternal Witness and Collected Company, this deck has potentially a lot of grind to it, which is where it could differ from traditional humans. I feel like this style build of humans could potentially be very, very good against decks like uh, Jeskai and like the Hollow Fountain decks, basically. <sighs> I think on the play, I just can't keep a hand without a one drop. Like we have, we have, we have twelve one drops in our deck. Sorry, so I don't think you you almost never should keep a seven without a one drop in this deck. I think that's probably a recipe for a disaster. Why not Pride Mage over Rex Sage in the board? Kinda, I don't know. I just feel like that's being too cute. I feel like I'd rather have it easier to cash without needing white mana for sure. This hand doesn't have white mana in it. I'm actually gonna be greedy and bottom that. They're gonna like kill my Avacyn's Pilgrim here and I'm gonna be really sad, but I think I'm not supposed to keep that. Oh, I guess if I kept that, I could go champ. Yeah, I should have kept that. I'm dumb. I could go champion Thalia on turn two if I'd have kept that. Yeah, I'm silly. Yep. I deserve that. Fetch land. <laughs> I like I like running a no justice stream. I like running a no justice stream. All right, let's grab the hollow fun. I think I want a Thalia before I champion here, just because like they're playing a removal deck. Militia Bugler and Witness should be very good here. This is this is very likely the style of matchup that I was talking about, where having that number of grindy elements should be very good for us. Hopefully, we'll see how it plays out here. I also have passed all of our grind that exists in the main deck. I've got uh, I've got some tireless trackers and a, th and a fourth witness in the sideboard. Spells, spells. That is that is technically that is technically a spell. Well, well played, Magic Online. Well played, well played, Magic Online. I think Dali is just a very good card in general, and there's only four there's only four collected companies in my deck. So I think it's okay to play two individually powerful cards in your deck, even though they have a little bit of anti-synergy with each other. People people get so caught up with in like Thalia makes my company worse so I can't play them both together that they like overlook the fact that like a lot of the games you're not gonna have both these cards together and they're both individually powerful cards. Hey, Gazni. Hit a non-creature spell. This is bold. Because they can't, they can't cast this. They can't cast this because Thalia makes the cost plus one. Playing the Bloodbraid Elf here seems really loose. Not only can they not cast a non-creature spell off of it, but like it can't even attack into my Thalia. Spells! Spells! Alright, God bless.
This this Knight of the Reliquary is a surprise 5-5. Five five because we can go quarter ourselves here. Maelstrom Pulse or Liliana? Stuff beat. Long time viewer on YouTube, first stream I've caught. Keep up the great work. Thank you for the bit, Sither. I appreciate it. Welcome to a live one. Reflector Mage, send it back from whence it came. Get in there. Get frisky, Miss Dahlia. Just get them. Get them. Stick them with your pointy sword. Stick them with the pointy end. They don't have any creature lands in their mana base right now either, which is great for us. Actually, I should leave white up here, right? Represent a path to exile. Uh, had I ghost quartered my own land and then drawn a collected company, if I still had knight, knight's effectively a ramp spell is something to keep in mind. Bob Fadant against the aggro deck. That's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. I'm in love with the bugler. Be -a -dee 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 -dee. Please find me a lieutenant, so we're gonna do do do. Be -a -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I should have left green up here, right? I should have tapped the ghost quarter. Yeah, ten out of ten should have left breeding pool plus hollow button up here. I was so focused on hitting um, lieutenant that, like, I didn't think we could just hit a green creature instead. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Sing. Sing the song of my people. This is the song of my people. Du, 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 du. Pretty sure we're here to smash. I don't know about you, opponent, but we're here to smash. C -c Combo! This is bold. Take two, leave Dark Confidant in play. Is Dark Confidant gaining two here? Going to seven while leaving Bob out? This is bold. All right, show me some threes and fours, Bobby. Scavenging Ooze. They only have two green sources. So while Scavenging Ooze is like a threat in the long term, in the short term, it's not that good, especially if they want to play Goyf this turn. If we draw a land for the turn, we can bugle her into a Reflector Mage, which would be absurd. What you got? You got Termagoyf plus one more. This Bob is also potentially not on their team, which is good for us. Collected Company, also potentially very good. Whoa! Whoa! This is, all right. All right, well, now Lieutenant's on the table again because they didn't play the Goyf out. Okay, and Reflector Mage is on the table because we drew the land. So, let's do this. Sing you the song of my people. Pretty sure, pretty sure I just want that one. I could have gotten Eternal Witness and witnessed this turn to grab the Reflector Mage, but this, this lets me get like really aggressive here. Like they have to trade their board off. They can't, they have to, oh, this one can't attack. Sorry, they only have to jump block. So they're going to three. They're going to three. I'm leaving this in my hand in case they lily on N plus. And we like, we like haven't even drawn a company this game, right? Like company is our absurd card in grindy matchups like this. And like Bugler is just like singing them into the ground. So uh, any human gives us lethal in play because they go block, block, and then take five. Mm, they have another blocker here. Nope, they're just doing this. That's fine with me. Are they activating this aggressively? That turns on my Eternal Witnesses, which is nice. Reflector Mage is obviously super nuts. Super nuts. 
So I'm pretty sure, no, I need the Thalia, oh, and let the new one die. You're right, I definitely could have done that. D. Mekyo, thank you for the $5 donation. Your content is great. You explain things really well. Love your stuff. Well, thank you for the support. Thanks for keeping me here. I appreciate it. I think I just ship, right? I think I just ship. Block, block, they gain one. If they have a removal spell, we feel bad here, but I'm pretty sure this Scooze is gonna like take over the game long term, so I just need to I need to push my advantage here. Hmm, that sucks. That sucks. Hmm. I think my I think my line was correct there. I'm pretty sure I had to make them have it, but I think that's pro that's probably gonna put the game out of reach at this point. I'm gonna play this other Thalia, and we can like wait a turn or two, like see if we can draw a um, see if we can draw a uh, a collected company, but I assume we're dead at this point. Do I Ghost Quarter, Raging Ravine, assuming they only have one basic forest? What are the odds they have a second basic forest? Pretty high. I feel like they often have a second basic forest. That's it. it. I need a snack real quick. Yeah, we've had a lot of lethal draws at many points this game. I have hit kind of medium ones instead. 
We're not just dead here. It doesn't feel good, but we're still in this game, so I'm going to keep playing. I'm holding the land, so if we draw a retreat to Coral Helm, it's lethal. Do we play around Lightning Bolt? I don't think so. Is there a reason to play around Lightning Bolt? There's not. I would rather have Reflector Mage be lethal. So kill me. We're also dead to untapped land K command with this line, but I think that's fine too. Well, they can't, they can't K command us without an untapped land because Thalia is in play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just. Oh, baby. Oh, oh baby. Oh, baby. <sighs> how's it taste over there how's it how's it tasting how's it how's it tasting oh no do they have a removal spell top deck hero bum 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 ba -da dum bum 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 Bum, 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 ba -da -dum, bum. And this is uh, exactly lethal because they go to nine and then they take nine. Listen, chat, the Reflector Mage is really good here, but like we've drawn zero companies in like 20 cards, so I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't want to hear it. We ground that game out without drawing our best card in the matchup, so I'm not going to say we deserved that, but we kind of deserved that, okay? All right, um... All right, I'm going to slide these in. Is it nuts to cut Thalia here? Thalia's not very good in this matchup, I feel like, right? Retreat to Coral Helm's not very good. What do we, what do we think of this? Peace level 100. I don't think I want Path here. See, I really like the Mana Dorks. I don't like... Do you, are you looking at the same curve I'm looking at here? I I don't think we're allowed to cut Mana Dorks, chat. Do you, do you see the 18? Do you, do you see the 18 up here? The 18 means don't cut Mana Dorks. That's... That's what that means. I'm going to trim a Knight of the Reliquary, I think. Uh, the Pack JAC felt sweet. Um, we played against a bunch of bad matchups and went 2-2 two and two anyways, so... This curve is chubby. It is, it is a fat, fat curve. That's true. We did trim down to 17. It's, sud it's suddenly a very, a very smart and thin amount of three drops. It's not fat with the lights off. God bless. God bless us, everyone. Alpstrom, thank you for the $15 donation. I appreciate that. Love your content and rants. It's helped my perspective right so I can enjoy modern again. Put this towards the deck slightly less broken than Stoneforge Mystic, Grishel Brand. God bless, happy to, happy to. Uh, this is almost certainly not a turn two tracker. 
You want to play, you want to think of Tracker as a four drop chat in these grindy matchups. Tracker is a card that you play and then immediately want to make a clue with. No, there's not a way to shortcut the night combo in paper because you need to track life totals and full mana and stuff like that. It's very clunky and awkward. All right, scale of one to dead. Where's this Avacyn's Pilgrim at here, opponent? Work with me. Work with me. Where are we at? See, I really feel like this isn't... I, I put the paths in the sideboard for matches like Hollowed One and Grixis Death General, like pretty threat light matchups. I feel like we're very firmly the beatdown in this matchup. Yeah, Shadow, Shadow and Hollowed One are the types of matches I envision those Path Exiles for. Maybe, maybe like Affinity where they're much faster than us. I feel like our Reflector Mages, along with Companies and Buglers to find them, are enough tempo in this matchup to not necessarily need Path to Exile. Well, we can't get Liliana here, which is nice. Scoos, yep. And that, and that could be an incorrect assessment. Like, I definitely, like, this is a viewer submitted deck that I haven't played a ton with, right? So I don't, I don't have a vast amount of experience. And it could be after playing a bunch of games in this matchup, you come to the conclusion that just that my gut was wrong and that this is a matchup where you want, you want more copies of things like that. Um, but my, my gut says that's what I want to do. I'm a big fan of casting my spells. I think if I wanted more utility lands in my mana base, I would play more copies of Horizon Canopy before I added, before I added uh, uh, Gabony Township. Speaking of good Reflector Mages, like next turn we get to go like Mage into Thalia's Lieutenant and just like, although I assume this Tracker is not going to get to live to untap. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if Tracker untaps. Wow, is that is that all we're doing here? That's if they don't have a bolt as well. Wow, that's that's like kind of absurdly good for us. Belligerent Mars for two five O's and then some blue red Delver Fay this weekend. No need to cut the line, but put it towards the Beaumont Delver deck. Perfect. So Mark, you're okay if this waits till Sunday then? I can, I am happy to put it in after this one today if you'd like, but otherwise I'm not going to be on until Sunday, so let me know. I really appreciate the, the absurd support. And I definitely want to take this opportunity to just knock the Liliana out, I think. Perfect. Sounds good. So I plan to be live Sunday night as the Pro Tour Top 8 is wrapping up. So we'll, uh, we'll start with it then. Thank you very much. I was having a heat stroke or did you get into the Top 8 of an SCG with Blue Red Wizards? Yeah, actually, I had my my article posted today. So, there's my there's my article. The gods are very angry. That's sad. Woo! 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 Oh, I've heard I've heard stories of this card chat. I've heard, I've heard legends, legends of old of the collected companies. Almost, almost thought we forgot to put them in my deck. I'm in love with the Coco. And if you look at this deck, this deck's got a lot of company hits, chat. We've got like 34 company hits in our deck right now. So, 
We spinning the wheel? We're activating re what? Uh, sure. All right. Well, that was a medium cocoa. But guess what, chat? We get to rebuy Coco next turn. Pick it up. Dee 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 dee. Beep 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 beep. Beep 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 beep. Beep 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 I hope they don't have another sweeper. If they have another sweeper, I will be a little sad now. But I've got this backup Coco, so it's gonna be all right. Like, look at this board. Like, we've got Coco in our hand, three clues in play. We've got a 4-4 four, four if they have another Anger of the Gods. Just, like, grind them into the dirt. Just, this is good. Good job registering that interactive deck. Just get them. Bury them deep in the ground. B. Aggressive. B, E, aggressive. All right, we're looking to dodge. That's another anger. Okay, I was I was ideally looking to dodge damnation there. So like, we still have seven power in play and I have a collected company. So like, let's go. Oh no, don't abrupticate me. How will I ever win the game now, opponent? The Elk, thank you very much for the brand new Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think I want a company now because if I hit an Eternal Witness, I don't want them to be able to eat my company. Perfect. Look at that. Spent four mana, added four power to the table, didn't cost me a card. It's hard to not be happy. My job's kind of great. And when, when my job is great and we have a sweet deck to play, it's hard not to be excited. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Bloodbraid Elf. Maelstrom Pulse. All right, so Selfless Spirit is dead. Got it. Oh, no! Oh, no! Chat! Chat! Our opponent has made us clueless! We're clueless! Oh no! Oh no! I do use a standing desk. My desk has motors in the legs, so it goes it goes up and down. Both these cards kind of suck against Scavenging Ooze, but Knight's pretty bad. I'm going to take the Witness here. Do -do 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 -do. You like how they like three for zero at our clues and like we still have the same number of cards in hands on both sides of the table? Man, I really hope we find some of those Jeskai players that we played against with Jeskai Ascendancy. I really want to bury a Hollowed Fountain deck with this deck. I, I just want to bury them deep in the ground, chat. Just surround them with all of their closest friends, like Eternal Witness and Collected Company and... -da 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 -da. <laughs> Knock them down to seven here. We're insulated against the Sweeper on the back of Selfless Spirit. And you'd like, even if they had something like Languish here, the Reflector Mage still lives. Bugler plays the John Cena song. Oh, oh, would you look at that? Anger, it would have only killed one of my things, but like, gosh, they... Where did Dredge hurt you, opponent? Can you can we have a can we have a heart to heart opponent you could let me in on where dredge really hurts you It 
feel like I feel like my opponent's been wronged. All right. Spin to win. Is it worth shipping? Is it worth trading Bugler or Lieutenant for three points of damage here? Probably. Probably. I think Languish is good in a split with Damnation. There's definitely situations where one is better than the other. Oh, I'm dumb. Why didn't I play this? Why didn't I play? Why didn't I play the Hierarch? The answer is because I'm dumb. This is a post-combat Hierarch of shame. 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 This is, this is a post-combat Hierarch of shame, chat. The reason why I didn't play the Hierarch is because I'm slow and stupid. Are uh, you dead? You look pretty dead. Start by cracking this. So we do this. Target Thalia's Lieutenant, because this forces them to eat, which means they can't block with the Raging Ravine. So now. There's one more creature in a graveyard. So they get to go block, block, and then take seven. They're dead, they have no cards in their hand. Yeah, I think they could die even if they blocked. I didn't actually count that, but they definitely can't if they can't block. And obviously we'd be in a better spot here if I had played the Noble last turn pre-combat and like still had a Thalia's Lieutenant, but it doesn't matter. All right, 1-0 start with Bant Humans here and we just beat Jund, which won the last open. So I could only conclude that this is now the best deck in Modern. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I stream Magic 30 plus hours a week here on this channel. I focus primarily on Modern. If you enjoy my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. I stream because I love doing it, but the reason why I'm able to do it full-time is because of the very generous support of all my subscribers. Uh, past that, you can support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. Honey is a free browser add-on that when you install it using link bit.ly forward slash hoogle honey, you'll save, uh, you'll be supporting my content here at no cost to yourself. What Honey does is save you some money on things you're gonna be buying anyways. When you have Honey's add-on installed and you put stuff in your shopping cart online, it searches automatically for coupon codes to try and save you money on things you're gonna be buying anyways. If it can save you money, it offers to do so. And if it can't, it leaves you completely alone. Lisa would like to get you on your way to a better night's sleep. Christy and I have been sleeping with Lisa for the last eight weeks now, and we truly enjoy it. Lisa provides foam mattresses, and I don't think we'd ever go back to a traditional pillow top. You can save $160 or more on your new mattress by checking out links bit.ly forward slash hooglebed US and bit.ly forward slash hooglebed CA. And of course, we'd like to welcome everyone out there to Hooglandia. Thanks for stopping by today, folks. It's your Wednesday, but it's my Friday. Um, this is going to be the last uh, stream I have for this week until Sunday after the Pro Tour. I'm going to be attending Gen Con in Indianapolis, Illinois, this Indianapolis, Indiana this weekend. So I will be I will be off tomorrow and Friday. But do remember that while I am off, you should check out my YouTube channel. All the stuff gets archived there and there's tons and tons of content up there. I mentioned I don't think you can keep a seven with a one drop. I'm gonna go back on that for this hand because I think this hand has enough together that I can I can risk it, but not 100% sure. Thanks for checking out Honey there, I appreciate it. All 
All right, all right, all right. We're one and one. We're one and one. Let's move it on. Move it on up. Do 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 do. Do 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 Lantern, it look listen, against me while I'm streaming, Lantern is the best deck in modern. There are there are most decks people submit don't beat Lantern. Thanks for the bits, wanna be beetle. <laughs> and this deck isn't zero percent. We have three sages, two trackers, and some companies, but like it's real, real bad for us. I guess Bugler gives you some play too. It's just gonna take so long. It's gonna, it's, it's just even, the problem with Lantern is that even when you beat Lantern, you still haven't really won because you've lost a part of yourself during the match. You've lost, you've lost a part. The only winner in the Lantern control matchup is nobody, everybody loses. All right, all right. Looking like some, I think we might have gotten our hollowed fountain wish chat. I think we found some hollowed fountains. So let's do this and let's do this. Someone, thanks for checking out, honey. I appreciate it. Satan wins because he loves watching people suffer. Oh no! Oh no! Chat! Chat! Oh no, no! Why does the wrath of God cost two mana, chat? Why does the wrath of God cost two mana? This is like. This is like that genie that grants you your wish, but screws you while granting your wish. They're like, I will give you Hollowed Fountain, but you have to play through Terminus. They did miss their land drop. They did. They did miss the land drop last turn. Land, speaking of, that's like kind of a land, I guess. That's true. Te technically, this isn't a hollowed fountain matchup yet. That's fair. It's a monkey's paw, right? Path me, baby. Oh, yeah. You've unlocked my bugler. There's no basic island in our deck. I wonder if that's a mistake. It's probably fine. Probably fine. All right, I'm gonna lead on the old, I'm gonna lead on the old bugs. Big, big B money here. Big B money coming through in the clutch. Sing the song of our people. That was a misclick. That should have been a breeding pool. It's fine. Reflector Mage isn't really that important in this matchup. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we didn't get cryptic'd there. Gen genuinely surprises me. Maybe the, the Vendillion click makes me think it's possible that they don't have another sweeper. We're definitely not in a great spot. When the, when the control deck decides to smack you with the Vendillion click.
Why doesn't the Bugler evoke the Six Flag song is the real question. Oh no, chat! Chat! Do you believe in miracles? Beauty! Whoop. Sad trumpet noises. Sad trumpet noises. It even, it like extra sucks because not only is it one mana, but like I can't witness back my bugler. I mean, this is like the perfects, right? Like their control deck and their answers, their their answers are lining up well into our threats. Like that's how the control deck wins. Like game games like this make the hollowed fountain decks look unbeatable, right? Well, when all of your stuff lines up well, that's what you want to do in life. And like we're not out of this game yet. Like they took their clock off the table, and like I've got lieutenant plus another witness here. We like rip a company and have a good one. We could be in a fine spot. Thalia's Lieutenant lets Eternal Witness attack into a Celestial Colonnade here, which is nice. All right. Third lieutenant's the charm, chat. The third lieutenant's the real, he's the real, they're the real go-getter. Yeah. yeah. And like, we're kind of still in this game and like they had a turn two terminus, right? So like on an average game where like they don't have turn two terminus, like not super worried. That's why you get to play best of three. Magic's got some variants built into it by design. Detention Sphere is kind of punishing for not playing the Knight of the Reliquary here. Maybe I should have done that. Rough. Thanks to Jen. Uh, we have two copies of Cavern. Yeah, definitely we'll be bringing in Reclamation Sage post board. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pack it in here. Yep, if you don't want variants, go play chess. Chess, go checkers, you know, lots of, lots of good choices for variants, adverse people. I don't even know if I board in Selfless Spirit, they probably have some sweepers that are not Terminus, but I'm not actually sure. Maybe this is a matchup where I trim some mana creatures. I do, do this. Some of them have like a fifth sweeper as a verdict. How do we feel about Canonist in this matchup? Canonist could be okay. It's, it makes it harder for them to Miracle Terminus on our turn, right? Teague would be an okay addition to this deck, probably. I think I'd rather have Pilgrim, because we're kind of a go-wide deck. I'm going to submit like this, see how it goes.
Seems a little slow, but it's like card advantage into card advantage, so I'm gonna keep it. Probably, probably just play knight on two here, or on three. Worth noting, you want to prioritize keeping basic lands in your deck against the Field of Rune Path to Exile decks. That way they can actually ramp us. I'm gonna go Bugler into Pilgrim here. Get some pressure into play. It's a little bit better against a Counterspell too. I mean, like this is kind of an ideal matchup for Holothon decks, right? Like I think we have a chance to all of our grindy elements, but like if your four terminus deck can't beat the deck full of creatures, like you should probably take it and throw it in the garbage can, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and company now because Companying now not only lets me hit tire our boy tireless tracker here, but it also means that uh, our opponent is not going to be able to What's the word that I'm searching for uh, snap mana leak us or cryptic us I think I'm all in here I guess we're not technically all in on the back of the tracker But like I definitely don't have the, the luxury of playing around another terminus off the top. I don't think I think I want to just like pressure, pressure, pressure here. Look at that. Played around Snap Leak and got rewarded. And there could definitely be an argument for fitting more caverns into the mana base. Like the mana base kind of is what it is to make the retreat to Coral Helm kill work. But like I've only got one retreat and honestly I probably should have even cut that last one. I think that, that kind of combo is probably too cute. All right, one more Coco, please. All right. All right, on to the next one. So we're one and one in matches played, slow and steady. Sometimes, sometimes they just want it more. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Good luck, Tannen. I'm going to give you a piece of advice that you probably already know, Tannen. If your modern deck can't kill someone on turn three, please reconsider it. Blue White Miracles is on the list of decks that I will not play for just a small amount of money. Scale of one to dead. I 
I understand why people stop playing this. I understand why people stop playing this. Tron kills people on the inside turn three. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Bad humans. We got some bad companies. Dear, dear, dear. Any thoughts on Grixis Control? I think it has control in its name, so it's probably not very good in modern. This deck gets a re-league, 0%. This deck is not very good. Probably would reject it as a donation deck again in the future. There is... There is a reason why if you if you read if you, I, I know reading is tough, but if you read on my website, it says a minimum of two matches will be played for a league. And we played two very full matches. It's possible I should stick Knight here on to play around at getting Thought Not Seared. Yeah, I feel like our card should be okay against... Uh, honestly, um, this deck really kind of feels like... It really kind of feels like green-white value town, right? Like, we don't have a lot of efficient interaction. We don't have a lot of... We don't have anything busted going on. So it just fe it feels like we're just coming up, like, really short against the decks that are really good and modern, in my opinion. I was thinking... I was thinking about that when I was looking at the deck too. Like we're, we're, we're kind of like a green white value deck with just like values lieutenant and champion to be a little bit more aggressive, I guess. How many bits for you to sing the entirety of Africa by Toto? I don't know what that song, I, I, the last time someone linked me that song, I knew what it was, but I, I couldn't tell you the lyrics offhand. I mean, if you're just playing Mantis Rider instead of Knight, at that point, you should probably just play traditional four col five color humans. Like at that point, you're probably close enough to just be a bad version of the good deck. Alright, smush are gonna smush, chat. What does Jund and Green Black Rock do to keep it relevant in modern? They have efficient disruption. They have more than just fatal pushes removal, and they have a bunch of one mana discard spells. Alright, if we find a reflector mage with bugler, we can send this back for to the netherworld. So I'm intentionally playing this before Champion of the Parish because if we hit Reflector Mage, I want to be able to cast it. Second Bugler. All right. I guess Bugler, Bugler, Thalia team up to beat this Reality Smasher. If they have another smusher, we're in a lot of trouble. That makes taking the hit pretty appealing, though. Just, like, grow the squad next turn, and then, like, my knight is huge. The problem with taking the hit is I'm then, de then dead to Lightning Bolt, but if they have Lightning Bolt, my block's not going to go well anyways. I'm just going to get destroyed. Yeah, chump, chumping might be a reasonable possibility. Just, like, ditch one as a gain three. That's probably an okay plan. Then, like, next turn, go, like, champion into lieutenant and just, like, have a much more impressive board than them.
or like almost certainly never beating like double uh, what's it called? Like almost certainly never beating like double bolt, so there's no reason to play around that. Yeah, that's why we said absorb three. So, so long, Lieutenant. I think the Green Red Eldrazi deck falls pretty firmly into the same camp that this deck and Green White Company fall into, which is that while they're doing okay mid-rangey things, they're, they don't have good linear draws and they don't have efficient disruption. So, they're just generally not very good in modern as a whole. Like, while they look okay in, like, these mid-range mirrors or, like, against decks like Jeskai or Jund, there's a lot more to modern than decks like Jeskai and Jund. It's okay to be mid-range or controlly in modern, but you need to have a plethora of efficient interaction while you do so. And these decks, like, four Lightning Bolts and Thought Knots here, like, that's not enough. That, that especially Thought Knots here, like, four mana disruption, that's a lot of mana, even if you occasionally have Ancient Tomb to power it out. All right, the fact that we're kind of stabilizing at nine here is very good for us. This Knight of the Reliquary is just going to be much larger than anything they can put into play from here on out. We're going to need to go Champion of the Parish into Eternal Witness, pick back up Bugler this turn. Be in a pretty reasonable spot. I do like Boreal Druid in this deck, though. I like a dork that actually makes, makes mana that they care about. Basically, I feel like the the rule of figuring out if a deck is going to be reasonably competitive in modern, you just need to ask yourself the question, can this kill my opponent on turn two or turn three some amount of the time? If you can't answer yes to that question, then you have to ask yourself the follow-up question, do I have a whole pile of efficient disruption? Like thought seizes, inquisitions, fatal pushes, stuff like that. Oh, I could have shipped with 4-5 Bugler there, huh? Yeah, maybe that was a good attack. Yeah, that was definitely a good attack. Definitely a good attack. This deck doesn't turn three with consistency, Burgle. There's only one retreat in it. Even when it has like two retreats, that's still not, not very consistent. Yeah, you should read my article here. Should read my article here. I wrote, a, wrote, a, wrote about it. Put words into play. Right. Did they choose not to cast the Obligator? Oh, no, they cast Ancient Surge that put Obligator in their hand. Okay. You need to, to have a good mid-range deck, you need to do what basically every good mid-range deck in Modern does. Play seven one-mana discard spells and Collective Brutality. That's, that's, that's how you make a good mid-range deck. Uh, it's a pretty good one. I sent Thought Knots here back to the Shadow Realm here. The Bant Devoted Company list that we played last night was very, very good. You can find that on my website. What card should it be instead of a braid? Just like, it just want another card that can impact the board. Nivik, thank you for the seven months, but I appreciate that at the tier three level. Welcome, welcome, welcome back.
a champion here so we can cast it. Are they conceding? No, nope. Komodo's just locking up. I'm going to hang tight for at least one more turn here. It's very po possible we should have a Gavany Township in the deck, but the deck like already mid-ranges so well that a Gavany Township feels kind of redundant. Oh yeah, I could have Bugler attacked again. Keep forgetting this card is Vigilance. Yeah, Bugler should have attacked the last two turns. I feel like describing a 1-1 one, one for 1 as insane seems a little bit aggressive, but I mean, it's like certainly playable. Put that re up on Grixis Hollow Flare. 10 out of 10. That probably means we'll, we'll play that on Sunday. I mean, the best ensnaring bridge deck in modern is also a Thoughtseize deck. Blood Moon decks aren't very good, by and large, in modern in the current format. All right, third time's the charm. We figured out to attack with bugles on the third time. Love seeing you at the blue red deck on the SCG tour stream. Thank you Equinox for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for the continued support. Oh yeah, that's a good call. Attack with the bugler first. Mm, it does. I don't. I don't think that's necessarily a good idea though, because we know my opponent has a thought not seer in hand that we reflector mage. So ending this turn with a creature in my hand isn't very good. I mean, I think it has potential. It's almost certainly playable. Like it's an upgrade, but like calling it insane seems like an overstatement. The Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy of Bant Company. Uh, Stream Decker has a hard time on mobile sometimes. You can still type exclamation point deck in chat to get a link to the deck list. All right, we've out mid-ranged him. We have successfully out mid-ranged them. Let's cut these Thalias, bring in these paths, bring in more mid-range stuff. Need to cut two more cards here, chat. What do we want to cut? Maybe Witness is kind of narrow. Now, I don't think we can cut mana creatures in a matchup like this. Again, we just have a lot of threes and fours, and we don't want them to, to die to them getting under us. This hand looks great. Should this list be playing four trackers? I mean, I just, my recommendation would be to not play this deck. I think this deck is bad for the reasons I've been listing. It's just not linear enough and it's not interactive enough. So it just doesn't do anything that you really are super interested in doing in modern. You're gonna be doing one of those two things, be more linear, be more interactive. This deck doesn't successfully do either of those things. No, the one retreat is silly and I should have cut it. All right, so now we're definitely not playing out champion, definitely not double champion. So let's just go tracker here and next turn we'll go tracker, make two clues. The Bant, the Bant Devoted Druid deck is really trim. Honestly, there's probably a configuration of the Bant deck that plays Bugler in it as well, just like is more redundancy and consistency for finding your combo pieces.
Could could potentially be Bootburgle. Could be a chance. Went 7 0 in the challenge with Bugler. Yep, sounds sweet. All right, so I only as I can like only assume that we're getting we're getting Smasher next turn. I agree, Perplexal. I think this deck is just much worse than the five color humans. What on earth is in their hand? They just like have a bunch of bolts in their hand. There's no way they have another bolt, right? If they had another bolt, they would have they would have killed this tracker by now. Any land lets us go kind of insane so I can ghost quarter myself. Alright, what is Stirring's finding for us? Obligator, sure. Huh. How do we feel about float? Float, ghost quarter myself, get a forest, witness back the hollowed fountain, play champion of the parish. I think I like that. I guess I could have also gotten basic planes and gone champion lieutenant. I guess that's a little bit better. Makes my whole board bigger. Like this is this is going for like a longer game, and we're like, we're not definitely not playing a longer game right now, right? We're definitely like here for the short term. Do I just pass here? I think I just pass here at this point. Yeah, I think I should have gone champion into lieutenant there. We'll have to go scorter. Then I could have played another lieutenant next turn and just ended the game. Champion plus Lieutenant would have let us attack for 5-9. Would have let us attack for like 10. Seems fine. Nobody believes that Entrancing Melody is playable. All these silly people are just like, why don't you play Threads of Disloyalty? It's like, ah, oh, that card is so much worse for so many reasons. It dies to Abrupt Decay, doesn't take three drops, just like very, very sad card. 
Hopefully rip a white source here and just go like Lieutenant, Lieutenant, and then destroy them. Even just single Lieutenant here is going to be very good. Yeah, yeah, getting to snap it back is kind of absurd too. I agree. All right, so they have to trade or chump here or they're dead. Actually, they have to chump, right? Because if they trade, they take 13 and they're dead exactly. All right, we out mid-range the worst mid-range deck than us. Yeah, yeah, my wrap up for this deck is basically just don't play it. Um, it's, again, just to summarize what we've said multiple times this league, it's linear draws are not fast enough and it doesn't have a critical mass of efficient disruptive elements to keep the decks that are more linear than you from killing you first. So. Got an obligator. Am I dead? I'm dead to a bolt here, actually, right? Huh. I guess I deserve that after making fun of their deck. Opponent said no bolt. All right. No, if they if they have a bolt, they bolt the lieutenant and attack us for eleven. So, all right, 